Hey everyone, Mitchell here from New Dawn Aquaculture. We're a coral farm located in Edmonton, Alberta that focuses on farming corals for the Canadian market. In this video, we're going to talk about an easy to keep genus of SPS corals, Stylophora. Often I'm asked what is a good easy to keep SPS coral for someone wanting to try out SPS for the first time. You'll hear online a lot of people referring to bird's nest or Seriatopora being the best place for beginners to start. I think bird's nests are an easy to keep SPS coral, but I definitely wouldn't consider them as easy as a Stylophora. There's a couple other pretty good options for beginner corals, such as Postlopora, Pavona, Cyphastria, but really you're not going to go wrong if your first SPS coral is a Stylophora. Stylophora is part of the family Postloporidae. And this family makes up three main genera that we see in this hobby often, those being Posilopora, Stylophora, the subject of today's video, and Seriatopora, which is more commonly known as bird's nest coral. Now, Stylophora also has a common name of cat's paw coral, but for the most part, I don't see this name used too often. Most hobbyists tend to just refer to it by the genus. When it comes to knowing the difference between these three genera of corals, it's one of those things where it's a little bit more challenging to describe exactly what the differences are, but the more you look at corals of these three genera, Stylophora, Postlopora, and Seriatopora, the more the pattern recognition in your brain will just automatically be able to pick them apart. Seriatopora or bird's nest corals are definitely the easiest of the three to identify. They tend to be thinner branching, some of them will have sharp tips, the pulp extension can be significantly more noticeable, or the pulps are more widely spaced. Again, it's a little bit difficult to tell you why exactly they're different, but having looked at so many bird's nest corals, it's just one of those things where if you've seen enough of them, you can pick them out pretty easily. When it comes to the other two, Postlopora and Stylophora, these two can be a little bit more challenging to tell apart, and there definitely is a finer line for some of these when it comes to determining which genus they fall into. The thicker branching, knobby looking ones, they're fairly straightforward and easy. Just by visually looking at them, you can tell the difference. The Postlopora's tend to be a lot more erratic, and the Stylophora's seem a lot more smooth with their knobby branches. Unfortunately, with the thinner branching ones, it can be a lot more challenging to distinguish the difference between the two. We always do our best to identify everything to at least the correct genus level, but with some of the thinner branching Stylophora, it can be pretty difficult to know if they are actually a Stylophora or a similar thin branching Postlopora. That being said, the care requirements between these two corals are virtually identical. So even though it can be challenging to completely nail down the identification, in the end it doesn't change the overall husbandry that we need to provide the coral. Thankfully most of these corals are not that thin branching and we don't really have these identification issues with them. Now that we've pointed out the differences between Stylophora and the other closely related corals, let's look at the care requirements of Stylophora. Stylophora are small polyp stony corals, also known as SPS corals. And SPS corals are known for being difficult to keep, requiring high light levels, requiring a lot of flow, pristine water, and very stable water chemistry. While those care requirements are certainly an overgeneralization and really shouldn't be labeled to all SPS corals like they are, I will say that if you can provide your Stylophora with all of what I just described, it's gonna do really good in your aquarium. It's gonna grow fast, it's gonna color up nicely, and you're gonna have awesome polyp extension out of it. That being said, you definitely don't need to provide those conditions to your Stylophora. You should always aim for the pristine water and the stable water chemistry, but when it comes to the flow and the lighting, you're dealing with finite space in your aquarium, and some of the prime real estate is probably better off given to a harder to keep coral, which may actually require those really high light levels like an Acropora. You can put your Stylophora significantly lower and it's still gonna do really well in your aquarium. 
If you do move your Stylophora to a slightly lower part of the aquarium, some less prime real estate, you may be sacrificing a little bit of color, but I really don't think it's that big of a sacrifice and it's probably worth doing if you want to keep corals like Acropora and Montipora. Of course, you should always aim to have your water chemistry stable and not have your nitrates be too high or too low. But outside of that, giving a Stylophora, let's say 125 par instead of 300 par at 300 par, you may get 100% of the potential color out of the coral. At that 125, you're probably at 90 to 95%, and it's a negligible difference between the two. And that's why, despite the fact the coral probably enjoys the higher light, if you don't have much space and you have to move one of your SPS corals down a bit, this is a prime candidate for that. It's still gonna look really good getting less light. When we have corals overgrowing our SPS farm system and we need to start bumping some of them from the SPS system to our soft coral system or our LPS system, we're always pulling the styloporas and for that matter, the postloporas first. When it comes to the water chemistry side of the care requirements for stylophora, they're definitely a lot more forgiving of things like alkalinity fluctuations or your nutrients creeping up a little bit higher than they should. This is again one of those examples where the care requirements that are generally thought of when thinking of SPS corals are really just the care requirements of Acropora that then get labeled on all of the other SPS corals. However, this is not an excuse to be lax when it comes to your water chemistry. Just because corals of the genus Stylophora can deal with less than ideal water chemistry doesn't give you an excuse to not monitor it or not do your best to keep it stable you will get better growth, you'll end up with a healthier coral, you'll have better pulp extension and better color if you can keep your major and minor elements stable and flat, and if you can make sure your nutrients, your nitrate and phosphates, are not too high, but are also not zero. When it comes to feeding your corals, Stylophora are not really a coral that I would ever go out of my way to feed. There is arguably some benefits to doing so when it comes to growth rate and color, but I think those benefits would be pretty negligible and it's probably not worth dirtying your tank's water to feed these corals. That being said, if you deal with low nutrients in your aquarium and you're always battling to keep them up, then you may want to look at feeding your stylos something like a powdered coral food or amino acids would be what I would use to feed them. I hope this video has helped you decide if a coral of the genus Stylophora makes sense in your aquarium. If you want to learn more about the Stylophoras that we farm or any of the other corals that we farm at New Dawn Aquaculture, be sure to check out our website ndaquaculture.ca. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel as we're going to be doing more videos on all of the rest of the coral strains that we farm at New Dawn Aquaculture. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.